Hi, I'm going to go ahead and do a build of the filament monitor here, and I'm going to do a build of the uh, double assembled kit so that you can see how everything goes together. So if you have anything else, uh, you're going to see the instructions for that in here as well. The first thing I'm going to start off with is showing you our two monitors. We've got the secondary monitor and the primary monitor. As you can see, the primary monitor has all of the circuitry on it, and the secondary monitor is very simple. All it's got is the encoder, and just this ribbon cable that uh, comes out. It's a six inch cable. You can also use individual wires if you're assembling this on your own. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is uh, take a look at our brackets here. So originally when I was sending the brackets out, uh, I was sending them out with a primary bracket and uh, the bracket back connected to it as a single piece. Now that makes it really hard to ship. So what I started doing is sending them out as two pieces um, that are actually screwed together. And that allows you to uh, lay them flat and ship them flat, which makes things a lot cheaper for everybody. So the first thing we want to do is when the uh, brackets come off of our printer, they're going to have these structural uh, supports inside of there. And we want to take those out because we don't actually need them. So we just take some pliers or something and you can break those out really easily. Um, so I won't uh, do all of those right now, but there's also, there are also some supports inside that are diagonal that are designed to support this top, and we want to take those out as well. Those also come out really easily. Uh, you can do filing if you want uh, things to look cleaner, but I'm not going to go through that uh, right now. We'll go ahead and just set this aside, and once you uh, get all of your filing done, you'll see that you have uh, two brackets, and they're both ready for the ribbon cable to go through as well as any cables to go out and two slots for buttons here. So what we've done is taken some M3 by 14 millimeter bolts here and we uh, just go ahead and bolt these in. There are a couple of holes in the top of our back. There's two there are two uh, bolt holes for each side and this back is going to actually slide over the back of the bot and we'll put a zip tie through here to zip tie our mesh hose. On. So when you're putting these together, make sure that as you're looking at it from the front here, you can't see those zip ties, otherwise you won't be able to get it over your bot. So go ahead and uh, make it uh, look just like this, and you can go ahead and tighten these bolts down. I'll do that really fast here. Maybe not as fast as I'd like to, but get it tight and you'll be able to see what it's going to look like. So yeah, nice and tight there, and we'll do one on this side too, just so you can see um, sort of what it looks like when it gets tightened down. Actually, I'm not going to go too th too deep on these sides because I want to show you something else that's important on this video, and I don't have time to edit this before I put it online. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten this side down. That'll make things easier for us. When you're done, uh, again, just to sort of stress, you want to make sure that um, you have bolted it together such that this side right here is flat. Now, here we've got our, our uh, brackets together. Now, what we're going to do is take our secondary uh, wheel here, our secondary encoder, and we'll go ahead and put it through just like that. And this is our secondary housing fits in there just really nicely. Um, you can see over here is our tensioning arm. Now normally when our filament goes through it pushes out on this arm uh, so that gives it a little bit of tension but I found that when I was using really poor quality filaments that the diameter would change. So I wanted to find make sure that there was a way for people to tighten it down uh, after they received it for whatever reason. So if you use this bolt normally you're not going to use this tensioner bolt on the side but you can tighten it down and that's going to give you a tighter grip on your filament. But normally you won't need that. In fact uh, on some of the earlier designs, I don't even provide that extra flange there for that bolt because it's, it's not really necessary for normal operation. But anyway, um, so we've got that in there. And the next part is going to be this hub. Now this uh, normally holds a Lego tire. I don't have any on, in stock at the moment. I'm waiting for them to come from uh, Lego's Pick-A-Brick program, which takes like three weeks to, to get to your house. But as you can see, it's just a, a circular hole there with a flatted shaft entry in there. Now one side that flat is flush with the front edge and the other side it's actually uh, embossed or bossed 
embossed a little bit and we want to put that side on the encoder so it'll slide all the way down and we can just some, use something long and, and stiff to, to sort of push that in there and uh, next thing we want to do is put our bearing on this is our tensioner bearing and the tensioner bearing holds the filament up against that Lego tire that's in there and then we put our uh, primary uh, stabilizer bearing in and if you get it in straight it'll be just fine just like that so this is what it's going to look like when you're uh, done with your secondary housing and the next thing you want to do if you're putting together a, an entire system is you want to thread that that um, uh, wire through that hole there and then when you get it together this is all going to line up just perfectly we have some bolt holes on the top and I'm gonna bolt just one of them just one of the bolt holes in we have one on the top and one on the bottom I'm just gonna put one in for now so you can get an idea of what it looks like gets nice and tight make sure to use an M3 by 10 if you're using these these brackets and putting them together yourself you can see that there's an additional bracket right there I'm sorry, an additional hole right there that you can bolt it in. So now that we've got this together, we can go ahead and tighten our uh, bracket the rest of the way down. And this is going to give you an idea more or less of what it will look like uh, when you're done. And that's that's about how it's going to look like after we get things tightened down. This allows it to just clip right over your bot. So the next thing we want to do is put our primary housing on, our primary monitor in. So the first thing we do is thread this wire through here, just like that. And then we're going to solder it on to our uh, primary monitor. So the primary monitor has a number of connection points. This channel here is for that secondary encoder system. This is for ex uh, external ac access to the pins and then this is our primary connection point. Uh, we can also connect up a ribbon cable there. So I think the first thing that I'll do before anything else is go ahead and solder uh, our, our longer cables in that are going to go under the bot. So the first thing we do is remember that this is going to be mounted this way with our cables coming out of the back. So we want to put all of our cabling through from the back towards the front and I'm going to put in uh, the 5 volt line first and it's a little bit awkward I'm not using normally when I do soldering I use my helping hands but it's a little tricky to do a video uh, and everything else all at the same time so we'll just be careful here through just a bit. Okay, that was our positive. I made all the positives red. That's 5 volts. And we've got our n negative, which is 0 volts. We'll go ahead and solder that on now. And lastly, we'll put on our signal line. You can see the diagrams for these on the website to see. Make sure that you're putting them exactly where they go. All right. We don't want to connect any of these pins together, so if you get too much solder on there, make sure you get it cleaned off. And now we've got those three lines. And clean up those solder joints just a little bit. Want everything to be nice and pretty and stable more than anything else. We can also nip the ends off. And it makes it a little safer so they don't touch each other later on. So we will feed these cables through here, just like this. And you know, wire cables are always a little bit frustrating. All right. Uh, we'll put that ribbon cable through again since it popped out. And the ribbon cable now, we have to thread through here, through these four pins here. I've tinned this first to make it a little bit easier to solder, um, or not. 
we'll go ahead and put those through there. And when we warm that tinning up, it'll should slide through just really nicely. This can be a little trickier to to solder in four cables at a time. So now that we've got them sort of tacked in there a little bit, we will There we go. Very nice. All right. I'll go ahead and trim those as well. Perfect. Now we can go ahead and slide this into its own housing, just like that. Put the hub on, slide it down, pincher bearing. These are 606 bearings, if you're curious. And then we drop our stabilizer bearing in there. That keeps the encoder from getting damaged from uh, getting pushed on the sides. And we will slide this guy in. Now, Just like we did on the other side, we will use these bolts to hold it in there. So again, one on the top and one on the bottom. I'm just going to do the top one at the moment. So we've got our connection points coming out and everything is together just great. So we're going to push this ribbon cable forward and that's going to go around our mesh hose uh, for our mesh jacket. But this is what we have at the end.